NASA's Artemis 1 rocket is set for a test today. Now, that's the second attempt after April's test had a few issues. Yeah, so this is what we call a wet rehearsal. You essentially take the rocket, you fill it up, um, get it ready to launch, you do the countdown, you do all the testing, essentially everything except launch. Uh, and the idea here is, is they want to make sure that the filling up of the fuel and the emergency unfueling, so in the event that the real rocket doesn't take off, they can pump out the fuel safely, that all of it works. So they've been rolling it out to the launch pad, as you're seeing, getting ready for that wet rehearsal, which should be starting uh, kind of later today, our time in the U.S., and it'll take about 48 hours to do. And as you said, this happened in April. They did this wet rehearsal. They did find some problems in this process, so they had to stop that test, fix it, uh, and then hopefully get a second time. You know, the reasons are very important why they do this testing to make sure nothing goes wrong with the rocket launch. So hopefully it does work well. If it does work well, this is the final test that they need before that first Artemis mission launches to the moon, this time currently scheduled for mid-August. And now the fastest growing black hole in the past nine billion years has been discovered by Australian researchers. What does this mean? Yeah, so a really cool discovery. So using uh, the Siding Spring SkyMapper telescope, uh, they were able to find this black hole. Uh, as you said, it's a very big black hole. So it's 500 times bigger than the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy. And it eats about the size of an Earth per second. Uh, and this is all important for understanding how black holes grow. We think black holes start as these very small things uh, when a single star ends its life and over time eats more and feeds more growing up into the big ones that we see today. And so when you find a black hole like this, that kind of pushes that bound for how big it can get and how much it can eat. And then it tells us a bit of just about that process that unfolds in the history of universe and hopefully shedding light on how these monsters get to be the size they do. Because, you know, when you eat the size of an Earth per second, you're mighty big. <laughs> Certainly is the case, Brad. And just finally, the Hubble Space Telescope has spotted the first rogue black hole. So a black hole all by itself. How unusual is this? Yeah, you know, we know that there's a bunch of these small black holes that exist in our Milky Way. So unlike that big one we were just talking about, these are the tiny ones. But they're obviously hard to see. We don't really get an image of them directly. We can only see when black holes feed. These small black holes don't. Uh, and so this kind of rogue black hole, which we think is actually more common than we've measured before, where it's kind of lurking near a nearby star or star cluster, Generally, we find them with other stars so we can kind of see their effects through gravity. But when they're by themselves, they're obviously, you know, there's no real other way of finding it. So this one was a bit of luck because we actually think there could be 10, 50 million of these small black holes in our galaxy. So we actually think they're quite common. But if we're not really finding them, we just don't have that good understanding of how common they are. So finding one by itself probably gives credence and pinpoints that, yeah, there's a bunch of these lurking around in our galaxy at a very safe distance, um, but we just haven't been able to find them yet. So hopefully, again, insight into just how many of these things uh, are in our neighbourhood. I'm glad you said a safe distance. Uh, some interesting developments there, Brad Tucker. Thank you for your time today. Thanks.